something special, really different. Tastes great. Frankie's spicy pork and beef sausage in a sesame seed roll. Topped with mustard, tomato or fruity sauce. Frankie's, the super hot dog. On sale at the kiosk now. Frankie's, from Lyon. Ocean Software presents Red Heat, the computer game. The heat is on, and the chase is in full cry as East and West join forces to hunt down a Soviet drugs dealer. You are Captain Ivan Danko, top cop in Moscow's Homicide Division. Now battle through four levels of rough, tough action with numerous subplots to test your reflexes and stamina. It's all action with stunning graphics. Feel the heat. Red Heat, the exciting new computer game promotion. Available for Spectrum, Commodore, Amstrad, Atari ST and Amiga. And now, preview time. When it comes to entertainment, you can't beat a good film. So let's take a look at what's coming your way. Entertainment history from a brand renowned for non-stop action adventure from a name that stirs the imagination from a universe where good is heroic and evil sets the screen ablaze comes a man who will always remain a hero I'll get that vampire's blood if I have to suck it from her neck How long have you had it? About uh... Three days. It has been 400 years since its last reincarnation. Any pain? It kind of moves sometimes. The soul of black magic is waiting to be reborn. What's your diagnosis? Von Richie Salatu. For years, man has turned his back on the supernatural. This is hers! I'd almost describe it, uh, Some will deny it. There's a fetus. Others will fear it. On her neck? One woman will give birth to it. Uh, uh. The Manitou. Since the beginning of time, it has practiced the mysterious arts. Its day is near. Each hour it grows stronger. Soon it will come. The Manitou. Starring Tony Curtis on a supernatural journey into the world of avenging spirits. John! Michael Ansara. What does a white man want with Indian magic? A modern American Indian thrust into a savage struggle with unspeakable taboos. Susan Strasberg, living in a nightmare. Innocent people, tormented by terror, threatened by the unknown, trapped by an ancient horror. The manor, too. An evil that never dies. It just waits to be reborn. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Perfect Movie. Please welcome your host, Richard Sandwich. Yeah. 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 Keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Hello, everybody. We're here. We made it. 
Oh, I hope the transition was as slick, as <laughs> slick and smooth for you as it was for us here. Welcome to Richard Sandling's Perfect Movie. I am Richard Sandling, uh, Richard Sandling's Perfect Movie. Welcome, welcome to a live stream on Facebook uh, for the stand-up comedy show about films. We're all going to be seeing down. Yay! <laughs> Uh, we've got a great show. For those of you who have been before, uh, you'll know what to expect. Those of you that haven't, good luck. Uh, basically, we're going to uh, do some, uh, I'm going to have a chat to some people about some films, have people talking about films. And then we've got a special headliner, which is Eggsy uh, from Goldie Looking Chain. I think you can probably see, hopefully, at some point in the screen. And we'll be talking about his favourite movies and his, we'll be recreating some of his favourite scenes. It's very exciting. Um uh, yeah, this is a, this is a, a terrifying uh, thing to be in. I feel very much like this is sort of the uh, uh, like another live stream comedy show that could go terribly wrong. When you imagine that by now everyone knows how to do live stream comedy, it's very much the sort of Doctor Strange of live stream comedy shows. In that it will be good, but you'll be wondering why well, we've got to have a first one this so like so far into a series of live stream shows where it's really found its feet. <laughs> uh, here's an origin story. 17 movies into a franchise uh that's what this is gonna be like be great but you're like shouldn't we just hit the ground running well i'm gonna try and hit the ground running uh if you don't know what perfect movie is it's about loving films uh film fandom particularly film fandom online is largely tedious uh full of people who don't like films which is a, a bizarre thing people who like films they do you like that no it's rubbish but that no it's rubbish you like that no it's rubbish this is not a no it's rubbish uh, show this is uh, i like that let me tell you why i like it here's something else you might enjoy so the thing is joy. It's about films you love. It's not objectively the films that you've seen. You would go, you'd write an essay on the 10 best films objectively I've seen. It's about films you love. They don't have to be perfect uh, in the dictionary sense. of They just have to be perfect for you and your flavours and your, your, your tastes. Uh, an example I uh, had was uh, a film that you could watch. And as soon as it's finished, you could just watch it again straight off the bat. Uh, for example, recently I watched uh, I watched uh, Predator on the telly, and it finished. And I went on uh, E4 Plus One and watched the last hour of Predator again. <laughs> uh, so I don't know what's going to be on telly, uh, but I guarantee it's not as good as the second, like the last hour of Predator, for the second time. Uh, I'm very much that's the sort of thing. I think the sort of perfect movie I would go for things like Tremors is a good perfect movie. A film that like you want to crack open a beer if you don't drink beer. Uh, anything you would crack open, skulls, who knows, <laughs> uh, tins of corned beef, just anything you'd crack open and watch, something like that, that's what we want, uh, not, you know, the entire Three Colours trilogy, the deck of the entire, you know, like, you know, I like those films, but it's not really, let's get, let's get everyone around for a couple of beers and watch, you know, Double Life of Veronique, it's not largely, not really the thing I'm, we're talking about, so, uh, does that, is that, is that clear for everyone at home, no one at home, uh, can tell me that they, they get that so I'm going to assume you all get that it's uh, perfectly fine <laughs> uh, we've got some people in the audience so I'm going to have a chat with them just to give you an idea like what their favourite films are. I want to know what your fa you know, favourite films not best say not best film favourite film there's no right or wrong answers uh, some answers are more right than others but they are not uh, a thing so oh look look who we've got we've got, uh, <laughs> got Steve and Lindsay so do you have a favourite film well as a matter of fact I do and it's Labyrinth Labyrinth, excellent. Oh, it's the film to end all films. Yes, yes. I mean that is that is one of those that is one of those uh, that is one of those films where I would say that is a correct answer, even though Thank there you. are no right or wrong answers. I would. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so ha, you know, what's what is it about Labyrinth you like particularly? Well, not being too crude, but it's David Bowie and his balls, really, isn't it? It's, 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 <laughs> How did you do that? Oh, we all know that, mate. <laughs> you know, it, it draws the eye, doesn't it? It does, yeah. And you just think, oh, maybe I should go and do that myself. And then you just can't do it because you don't no. have that third hand. Spoiler. No, no. <laughs> no, it is. We're not talking about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hoggle is uh, frequently grabbing his leg in sort of fright and terror. And, and the bog of eternal stench as well. It's like, what did it smell like? What did it smell like? <laughs> Yeah. I don't know if that was something he insisted upon. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the you know. <laughs> trousers. No, no, yeah, oh, leggings. <laughs> doing it in leggings. Doing it in long johns, and that's it. That's your lot. 
So, <laughs> excellent. Excellent. So Labyrinth, yeah, Labyrinth is a good choice. A good choice. There we go. <laughs> nice. So we've got some background stuff. There we this go. Is by magic. Yeah, this is by magic. So oh. what about you, Steve? You got a favourite film? Uh, well, I think one of my all-time classics is actually Robocop. Robocop, yeah, see, the, the this is the level of one of them. working on, <laughs> this is correct, yeah. got to love Robocop. I, I, just, I know, it was one of them I sort of saw young and just could watch it over and over and over again, very yeah. quote most of it, and I think it's just the, the first scene, you know, with Ed 209 when he blows him across the desk, it was just like one of them, first time I'd seen anything like that and it was just amazing. Yeah, I think if, a, if you're like of a certain age, Robocop is one of like those movies that's like a sort of watershed moment when you get to see it. I think yeah. I remember seeing it quite, not young, but when I first saw it, I didn't really get it. I was too young to get it. Like I got the violence, but not the, the satire and the story because uh, it's like it's a futuristic thriller that's quite sort of, not garish, but like I couldn't tell the difference between the parody stuff on the telly and then the actual, like the actual universe yeah and then when i was older then i watched then i was like oh then suddenly you're old enough that i just got the emotional level you're like oh my god this is one of the saddest films i've ever seen like, it's just a great <laughs> when you get it it's just like the one of the best films uh, ever made it's like it's, it's weird to have an action movie that's so sad where yeah. it's just like, heartbreaking most action movies they have to have that bit where people are crying because like they've got to avenge their parents or whatever you know it's an action movie but robocop's actually a very very sad film i'm uh you know, because that's all, all for, you know, Peter Weller. Very good. Indeed. And obviously, it's always got that. Yeah. <laughs> and also, it's just got that which we will always be horrified by the Ed, uh, you know, the like the 10 seconds to comply will always be one of those things that sort of haunts you as a, yeah. you know, the thing you see to go, oh, imagine that, like the robot won't kill you. The robot like, won't, won't not kill you. It just. Yeah. I know it will. <laughs> And I think like I was thinking often think about that when I can't even get like my computer to turn off and I think like you know you know the, the technology is there already to destroy us <laughs> we don't need <laughs> like machine gun turret things yeah. as soon as they attach big guns to things then you're in trouble well I think that's true you know Windows Windows machine gun 98 or something is <laughs> terrifying yeah. thing. paper clip pops up it says did you mean to do that <laughs> 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 that would be good instead of a paper clip there's a reference for some, there's a reference for the young people yeah for those of you who are old enough to have seen Robocop <laughs> yeah, yeah. Days, yeah. yeah yeah I heard I, I heard a thing about Robocop that um, when he uh, when they made the film they didn't have enough money to make the whole movie properly this is the story I don't know if this is true but then I heard that Paul Verhoeven didn't film the bit where he gets shot dead like to become so they would have to film that <laughs> so no, sort of right. film that and then not film other bits he could like maybe not get he filmed everything else and didn't film the bit where murphy gets shot to pieces knowing they'd have to get money to film it <laughs> that, i hope that's true if it's not true like it's disappointing but i think that's the sort of like brilliant thing i'd like to do um, yeah, i wonder is that why the follow-ups were so bad well you know so they just I can't, got, can't speak like, for it got worse but well, they can't, you know, it can't all be John Wick and just consistently ruin. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> true, true. They can't just be. I can't talk about John you know, Wick. From, even Taken, like, <laughs> you know, it's like there's very few trilogies that can really like just keep keep it going. <laughs> well, yeah, true. Well, that was it with Taken, wasn't it? It's like, oh, what if we take it again? Yeah, that's been <laughs> they should have just called it Taken again, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Taken once more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I feel like they, they, there's a whole franchise. They haven't done this. this one. But anyway, Robocop is a good choice. Very good. And what about you, David? What is your favourite? Uh, well, my favourite film, Mr. Sandlin, is Dark City. Dark um, City! Woo! Obviously got not quite as good a pop uh, or as a British culture icon as uh, Lynn's has with uh, David Bowie, with obviously the great <laughs> Richard O'Brien. But, you know, but still a film with Richard O'Brien in it is pretty good. Oh, yeah. You know. <laughs> It's yeah. good. It is a good film, and it's yeah, uh, it is good. my favorite. Weird thing is, I know that <laughs> film more for uh, the Gary Newman dark song that's in the soundtrack. Than, yeah. but, I mean, I like I like the film, but I like mm. I'm a big fan of like the Gary Newman dark song that's in the. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's weird because Dark City is one of those you watch it and you go, "This is really good. Why isn't this more thought of as being really, really good?" It's weird, isn't it? Yeah, I I, I absolutely love it. I mean, I love with it, it to make it not be yeah. not be really cool and everyone love it, but for some reason, not everyone really really loves it. 
It's like a sci-fi L.A. noir, and I think that's brilliant. I just think... Yeah. yeah. But also sort of Massive. makes no sense. It's like yeah. you get the sort of reveal and you go, ah, and then you think about it and you go, ah. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it yeah. <laughs> I love it. And it's Kiefer Sutherland pre-24, isn't it? When he's just... Yeah. When he Kiefer had to just Sutherland do... Not things. as a all-out action hero, but as a really geeky scientist guy. So Nervous yeah. scientist guy. And he's not yeah. whispering. He's yeah. like talking. It's great. It's like, imagine. Imagine a time before... This is how old. Imagine a time before 24. That's how old we are. Ah. <laughs> 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 oh, what a time. What a time to be alive, guys. <laughs> so, we're here. We're here. This is perfect movie live. I mean, it's all... It's, it's, this is this is seamless. I'm sure everyone's really enjoying it. I should probably say hello uh, to the actually have Mr. Ash Frith. Uh, hello, Ash Frith. Hello, Rich. How are you doing? I'm very well. How are you? Splendid. Thank you. Good. Yes. That's out of the way, sir. <laughs> it's just seamless. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Eggs, how are you? Yeah, lovely. Having a lovely time. Good. This, is a, this is a great day. This is a it great, is a great day. day. This is a You said it was the worst day of your life earlier when you might I did, work. but I know, yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> it turned around um, quick. I've, Changed my opinion. I've changed my opinion now. It's the it's the best day. It really is. <laughs> Say again. Well, so I'm thinking in a minute, guys, we might uh, start uh, the show with Mr. Ash Frith doing some uh, doing some of his stand up now, uh, or or his sit down as I call it. <laughs> uh, now that I've worked the Zoom. Lovely. Uh, there we go. Uh, so uh, what I like to do is, if you've seen the show, is I like to get everyone to shout out film quotes uh, to bring the acts on. So we're going to see how this works over Zoom uh, in an isolation setting. Obviously, probably uh, some people won't want to do this in case it wakes up children. <laughs> but we'll see how that goes. So in a moment, this is what happens. I shout out a film quote. We all join in. So if you're at home, join in. Make your neighbours terrified. Uh, we're going to start off with a quote from uh, The 300. Uh, which you've seen, which is one of the greatest films ever made. Uh, I mean, it isn't, but it is really violent, which is sort of the same thing. Uh, <laughs> if you don't see it, we're going to do a shout. I'm going to shout out, this is Sparta, really loudly, uh, really loudly. Um, if you've imagined, uh, if you've got a good to do a Scottish accent, some of you might be Scottish, I don't know. Um, this was a film that made the brave decision that everyone from ancient Greece was uh, Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a bold, a bold, a bold choice. I thought, you know, bold choice. It's like then Sparta will fight in the sheet. <laughs> where, where, where is Sparta upon Tweed? So we're going to start this. We're going to go for this. Is Sparta. If you don't know how the quote goes, it goes like this. After three, well, it goes like this. Guys, guys, Sparta. So if you could all do that after three, uh, that would be really good. We'll try that. Ready? <laughs> after three, one, two, three. I mean that is that is as terrifying. That is the you know the Persian army would, would recoil in horror. <laughs> Having seen that. <laughs> Excellent. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the Persians are off. Are you ready for your first act? Yeah. Yes. This is the answer. Yes. Yes. Are you yes. ready for your first act? Then please welcome to the Zoom Facebook Live extravaganza of perfect movie, Mr. Ash Frith. Hello, viewer, viewers, I don't know, maybe viewer, I've got no idea. Uh, thank you very much for having me. I'll say the same thing I say every time I do a gig for Richard Sandling, and it is like showing your artwork to Da Vinci, but all you've done is smid shit on a canvas, and Da Vinci's looking at it and being polite and going, yeah, it's fine, well done. <laughs> So that's what I'm going to be doing for a few minutes here, talking about films to a man who's seen every film. I've only seen eight films. Um, so, you know, why did he book me? I don't know why he booked me, but that's fine. We're here now. Let's get on with it. Um, I, one thing I did notice was I've decided I've found the way of getting through this whole lockdown stuff. I'm going to stop calling it lockdown. I'm going to start calling it a bank holly year. And then it's fine. <laughs> You just go on. Oh, it's another bank holiday year. Brilliant. The government have given us another bank holiday year. Let's start being positive about things, guys, for God's sake. Um, the Obviously, the film industry has been decimated by the fact that uh, all the no one can go to the cinema. 
they started streaming some uh, straight away. I don't know how that's working out, but a load of films have been postponed. Uh, the big one uh, for me is the, the Bond. Is it Bond 25, I think? It's the new Bond. Is it the 25th Bond? Oh, yeah, there's no one there. Um, yeah, I think it's the 25th Bond. And, um, yeah, because I, 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 it's bad, isn't it? We've got to wait till December for that. Oh, I can't wait for all the Bond excitement. They're <laughs> really exciting films, aren't they? Um, <laughs> and uh, it's this is the last one for Daniel Craig. He's 66 now, so <laughs> that's going to be good. Uh, how he still pulls a sort of 19-year-old woman in the films, I don't understand. I'm not sure it's acceptable, but... It's not for me to judge. Um, but I always love to... Uh, my favourite Bond film is Skyfall, obviously. Loads of people have got uh, an opinion on Skyfall. And um, they, I've heard it slagged off. People have said it's like a Home Alone for adults. And I'm not going to go into all of that. Uh, for me, there is a bigger story in Skyfall. And I, I, don't, I hope that you've seen it. But if I, There will be spoilers, but it came out about 10 years ago or something. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you about it. There's a scene where uh, Bond needs to rescue M and get her to safety away from London. Uh, and he's got a, a, a house on in the Outer Hebrides of Scotland in Glencoe, I believe it is. And uh, so he picks her up in his car and he drives her to Scotland. And then instantly they're in Scotland. Uh, and I think that film misses a massive trick because what I'm interested in is the eight and a half hour drive mm -hmm. that the two guys must have taken to Scotland. Uh, eight and a half hour drive or a six day, 19 hour walk. I walked it <laughs> up. Um, they would have had to enjoy this. Uh, and as a clubbing comedian, I know what the motorways are like, driving up and down the country all the time, uh, you know, where, where you're going to stop. Uh, it can be, it can be hot, hellish. And that's if he's got a good run, you know, imagine if he's on a bad run, 40 mile an hour speed limits, roadworks where there's no people working. He'd be furious. Um, so I looked into it. There is actually a building in London that is just by the, um, is it MI5? I've forgotten what he works for. There's a, there's a building called Skyfall Productions, which is about five minutes drive away. But I don't think that is where they went. I think it was in Scotland. Mm. Uh, and the drive from Sky, the drive from central London to Glencoe is over 500 miles, right? I've worked that out as well because I've, because we've all had a lot of time on our hands, haven't we? Um, <laughs> Bond drives a 1964 Aston Martin DB5, which has a fuel capacity off the top of my head of 84.5 <laughs> litres. <laughs> um, M, you know, Helen Mirren, she is an 80 year old woman. So she and her sex doesn't come into it at all, for God's sake. I'm again not judging, but she will need to stop probably a bit more often with her old bladder. <laughs> what I was thinking. <laughs> and so, what I did was I looked at uh, <laughs> Judy Dench has got a weak bladder. Now, I'm not saying that, I'm just assuming. <laughs> I've never sat next to her, but I'm, I assume she smells a little bit of wee at all times. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> national, national hero, Judy Dench. Uh, musty Dench, they call her. <laughs> they don't. Your, your highness, what is. Um, so what I did was I looked at the, the route they probably would have taken, the fastest route, and I thought I would uh, break down the eight-hour journey and some of the service stations they would have, would have um, stopped at. So I've made some notes. So I'm always prepared. Uh, here it goes. This is a breakdown of the film. Imagine the film like this, broken down by the hour. Hour one. Bond explains his plan to M. She looks confused. It's a lot of information to take in. No guns, you say? Hour two. They don't have any guns. If you haven't seen the film, it's a terrible plan. Hour two. Conversation has drifted. Bond senses M is restless as she starts fiddling and complaining about the bumpy ride. Bond says it's a classic car. M doesn't see, seem happy. Bond jokingly threatens to hit the ejector seat. They decide to make their first stop when M's request for a sucky pep mint is responded to negatively. So stop one, um, I think they probably would have stopped at uh, Chorley Services uh, on the M M6 <laughs> in Junction 3 and 4 in Warwickshire. Um, I've just got a couple of reviews for the services from uh, recent times. So this is actually from two months ago. It's a guy called Ash Duffy. Uh, he gave it two hamburgers out of five, in case you're wondering. Uh, and these are his views, not mine. Visited Harry Ramsden's today and was served by Dawn. 
absolutely disgusting attitude and particularly uh, uh, and particularly because she threw my food at us when she had said when i'd said she'd got our order wrong i'm never going back <laughs> like, what i'd know planned i've never planned to go to a service station it's never happened i don't uh, this one's from sue uh, from six months ago i visited chorley services today while sitting in my car eating a lunch uh, a man banged on the car window he gave me his driving license and explained he had run out of petrol and he was heading to milton Keynes. strange he should be heading to the same place as me not really sue you're on the, the m6 somewhere just outside milton Keynes. seems fairly obvious <laughs> he didn't want money was unsure what he wanted, but I was quite nervous as I had thoughtlessly opened my car door to speak to him. Stupid woman. He, she said that. That's not me, by the way. That's her. Sex doesn't come into it. Do what you like. Anyway, nothing untoward happened. Is there a scam going on here? That's what she's put. No, so A man spoke to you and left. This one's from Stephen. The showers on the north bound side are dirty and don't look like they've been cleaned in months who's having a shower at a motorway <laughs> services <laughs> hour three conversation becomes awkward after m asks bond if he's seeing anyone and bond responds no they're dead <laughs> m responds my goodness who all of them m all of them <laughs> <laughs> hour four M asks if the woman in the sat nav can hear their conversation <laughs> <laughs> hour five conversation stops again M insists she has a dry throat and needs to stop for some honey lockets and a tunnock's tea cake <laughs> they stop now I imagine at Knotsford services on the M6 seen junction 18 and 19 which is in Cheshire if you didn't know this review from Paul Anderson um, I really have been nowhere as bad as this. There were no mince pies at all, despite being so close to Christmas. The torches were sold out. Can't think why. And then was a big busload of directors who had bought all the chairs. I demand an explanation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're going to get one, Paul. It goes on. My dog suffers from a disability, which I'm sad to say the Costa staff found very amusing. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what it is, but I want to know what it is. Um, which I found appalling. During my time there, I would have liked to have been served by someone English because I had trouble understanding what the job-robbing foreigners were saying. Again, <laughs> that's their opinion, that's not mine. On behalf of me and my dog, in brackets, if she could say something, close brackets, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend anyone going to this service station. <laughs> Hour six, silence broken by an audible fart from M. <laughs> this is met with an oops. Bond grips the steering wheel and is furious. <laughs> M mentions Bond is too close to the car in front. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. This is Killington Lake Services, M6, uh, junction 36 to 37, southbound of Cumbria, in case you were wondering. This review from Gary Davies, he gives it three hamburgers out of five. Visited on a trip back from Scotland. Food excellent, service good, all spoke great English. Worth another visit. I don't know what they need people to be speaking English for. <laughs> this is from Callum. Lovely location. Stopped here on the way home from Scotland for a picnic. Service food was okay. <laughs> Couldn't give a shit, Callum. <laughs> Imagine going on and typing that in <laughs> hour seven i spy game breaks down when bond refuses to crack and give any information about what he has can or will see with his little eye <laughs> bond says to keep it light bond says r for road for the sixth time <laughs> this time they stop at they stop at southwaite services on the m6 operated by moto uh it's at junction 41 to 42 this is now inside cumbria now, this is from Phil. He gives it four hamburgers out of five. Phil, wondering if anyone has handed in a wedding ring. I was there yesterday and had reason to remove the uh, <laughs> ring in the disabled toilets. And it may have been knocked off the side as I moved around the cubicle. <laughs> or it may have been taken while I was distracted. <laughs> now, 
<laughs> Again, I'm not judging Phil. It's not my place to do so. But he is giving blowjobs, isn't he? Is what Phil is doing there. <laughs> and then no. Phil is definitely giving blowjobs in the disabled toilets. Dirty Phil. But again, I'm not judging you. You do what you like. It's your cock and balls. And Gob. Hour eight. M, asleep. Bond uses this to play that game where you close your left eye and then open your mouth and then hit the rumble strip so that when your passenger wakes up, they think you're asleep at the wheel. It's a brilliant game if you haven't done it. Um, hour nine, arrive at Skyfall. Hour ten, Everybody is dead. <laughs> so that's Bond. Um, another film which has been postponed. Uh, this one really does upset me. It's Top Gun Two. Like we were all, we must have all been looking forward to Top Gun Two, weren't we? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. 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 As well, thank you for. God, let's just say it because I've got a bit about it. So yes, <laughs> um, weird. Top Gun's a weird film because um, I don't know whether you know this, but Top Gun. Uh, was completely funded by the US military as a piece of propaganda to get people to join the American army, which is bizarre, isn't it? They put 45 million quid to get people to join the army. But whereas I think about the British army's propaganda, it basically just says you don't need to live in Carlisle anymore. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you watch Top Gun I showed my son it recently and I remember it being incredible what a film I used to play Top Gun in the playground it was amazing and I watched it with my son he just turned to me and went so is this whole film just a big training exercise I was like oh yeah it is yeah they're just a Top Gun Academy is a training school that's what it, the whole film is it's mad it's essentially if Alien was just Ripley at Laser Quest for the whole time <laughs> <laughs> um and there's the obviously the the big thing about Top Gun is is the character, the character, the main character, and uh, it's going to be difficult for me to do a piece of interaction here. So I will just ask a question to this person that's sitting here who you can't hear. And uh, what is the main character in Top Gun called? No, no, it's not Maverick. That's right. I heard you all screaming, Maverick. <laughs> it's not Maverick. That's his call sign. That is his call sign. His name is Pete Mitchell. <laughs> that is not a hero's name, is it? Maverick. Now, that's a cool name, but that's his, that's his nickname. You all had that friend at school whose name was like Gary Johnson, but he called himself Ace or something like that. Like Maverick. And also, he's not a Maverick either, is he? He doesn't do anything Maverick in that film. And if he'd gone for his interview at the Top Gun Academy and they said, oh, like, what, what's your name? And he said, Maverick. And they said, why do, you, why do they call you Maverick? And he says, because I'm a loose cannon and I refuse, refuse to play by the rules. They'd say, well, th then you can't be in Top, top Gun. That's just, we're not going to let you behind a 45 million pound aeroplane. You have to follow, that is the one rule that we have in the army is you must follow the rules. There are no room for Maverick. And he isn't a Maverick. He doesn't do anything Maverick. He does, he flips a Russian guy the bird when he's upside down. <laughs> That's quite Maverick, maybe. The most Maverick thing that he does in that film is that he plays volleyball in that sexy volleyball scene and he's wearing jeans. That's the only <laughs> thing that he does. Is that just doing sport in jeans There's something wrong about it. Imagine how hot he would have been. Like, you can see he's dripping with sweat and just, like, obviously they've oiled themselves up for some reason. On sand, another terrible idea. I just think, honestly, is the... Uh, he goes straight from that volleyball scene to go and have sex with that woman as well, the woman that's the uh, the trainer, doesn't he? He doesn't, he just turns up there. All the, the sand that's in his crutch would have turned to glass. <laughs> he would have been taken the highway to the danger zone if she went down there. <laughs> <laughs> this is called Pete Mitchell. I thought, what other shitty names are there? And I did look into it and there's loads of shit movie star names. But what I thought I would do is uh, just very quickly, I know I've spoken for a long time. What I've done is I've written down um, a load of first names in this little jar and a load of action movie uh, advertising there, Vitalite. There you go, Dairy Free because uh, um, dairy is murder. Um, and uh, what I've done is my opinion. That is my opinion. It can't speak for anyone else. Um, but movie hero surnames are often like a noun, like a sharp noun. It's like, you know, Grab, John Grab, Pete Smash, and things like that. John Hawk. And so they're all called John, mainly called John and Frank in films. So what I thought I'd do is for the, for the audience members I've got here, I thought I would pick you an action hero name. And what I've done is on my iPad here, I have actually downloaded um, a randomizer in which I've put every word from the 
top 100 action films of all time. And I'll give you a movie name and an action film name. So we do that now. So, uh, Richard, do you want to go first? Yes, please. So I'll do this. So it's all above board. I'll do this. I'll pick you your name. So your name, Richard, is... Oh, John. John. John is your first name. Very excited. Your surname is... Slate. John Slate. <laughs> John Slate. That's good. That is a good name, John Slate. And let's see what film John Slate will be in. Here we go. So let's get that so it's not just reflecting all sorts of light. Here we go. Right. So the food, film, I'll do two. And if it does, bear in mind, this can go badly. <laughs> it can go well. I once had Arse Blood come out from Kick Ass <laughs> and Arse Blood. So let's see. Yeah. <laughs> once Aliens. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds How many like times will it be aliens? <laughs> yeah. But Only. that one that one time it is aliens. Yeah. Um sorry, is it bad language allowed? That was my opinion. Sorry, it doesn't I'm not representative of other people. I did swear. Um once aliens. Let's see if a third one I mean I added a third word, it doesn't work. Once aliens river. It's, it's poor. I imagine Once Aliens is um, maybe these people, they've been living their life on Earth, and they are aliens, but they tried to blend in, and then Dennis Quaid found out they were aliens and tried to drive them out of town. <laughs> I reckon the tagline would be, always aliens. <laughs> yeah, perfect. There we go, right. Uh, so, Lindsay. Is it Lindsay or Linz? Uh Linz. Lins. Yeah. Um, there are women's names in here, Lins, but unfortunately, you have drawn Harry. <laughs> first name. I <laughs> I've got four hours here, haven't I, Rich? <laughs> <laughs> Your surname, Lins, is Knockout. Yes. Harry Knockout. Yes. Harry so knockout. I and you're be Harry Knockout. I'm oh, sorry, knockout. mate. Uh, your film is called John <laughs> Time. <laughs> Harry Knockout and John Time. Yeah. Harry, to yeah, it is a gay porn yeah. film. You're right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> John Time is a film. It's a very 80s film, that isn't it? Where the guy's called yeah. John Time, and it's a time travel film where John Time can travel. They did that a lot in the 80s, oh, didn't they? Really? Yeah. What time is it? It's John Time. John Time. <laughs> <laughs> Linz, what do you think John Time's sort of... Uh, uh, what, what do you think uh, Harry... What was his name? Harry Knockout. Harry Knockout. What do you think his mission is in, uh, in John Time? Yeah. Is that who you are? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, what do you think about John Time? I think, it's a, I think it's a strong character name. Um, I'd fear him myself. Um, especially because he turns out to be a woman. So, yeah, yeah, it's a nice, nice plot twist there. <laughs> I like it. It was for Harriet. Quite right. Right. Oh, Steve, yeah. Steve, yeah. nice. you are Lincoln. And your surname is Squash. <laughs> <laughs> Lincoln Squash. Lincoln Squash <laughs> stars in. Here we go. Apocalypse War. Oh, oh no. Apocalypse War. I think you can muddle the words around if they come out wrong there. Apocalypse War, I think, is an incredible. What's that? Um, I think uh, you've all frozen, so I'm going to carry on talking. Uh, I believe Apocalypse War is the lowest budget um, Vietnam War film that ever existed. Um, everyone dies. Um, who's in it, Rich? Uh, Robert Davey, Danny Trejo, Vinnie Jones. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Tracy Lords. What's that guy that was in uh, Mannequin? Uh, Andrew McCarthy, or is that the other person? Yeah, he's in it. I like Andrew McCarthy. No, Andrew McCarthy's in it. He went to, to try and do a serious war film, didn't work out for him. Yeah, Pocalypse. right, Eggsy. Now, war. hello, and Danny Doyle. Apocalypse War. <laughs> Eggsy, can you hear me? Over, I don't know if it's my internet, it's gone, but um, Eggsy, first name is Ash. Good. I can hear you perfectly. 
<laughs> I think she's turning me off for being on for too long. She's the first one. <laughs> I like it. It's good. Your next one is Flash. Ah, Flash. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Film is. It's, it's gone. It. It's gone. I've lost it. Just as I got to the we'll film. Never know. Oh, it's shit. Frozen, yeah. Can I make the film up? <laughs> what was your character's name? Ash Flash. 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 Ash Flash. Shouldn't it be jumping, jumping Jack? Jumping Ash Flash. Yeah. It's a follow-up. It's a sequel to Jumping Jack Flash. <laughs> I call it uh, Dustbin Killer. I, <laughs> Ash Flash is Dustbin Killer. Um, it's about a man who. Um, at the site of dustbins after a terrible accident during his childhood um, uh, kicks off and murders anyone who stood within a three metre range of a dustbin. But his psychologist has to stop him and and follows him around for most of the film, uh, stopping him whenever he gets near a bin. <laughs> Is that any good? I think, well, I mean, I, I'd, I'd watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do the first, yeah, I do the first 20 minutes. I do the first 20 minutes. You're really good. I think that's a... Uh... <laughs> wow. I think he's definitely gone, isn't he? Poor is Ash. This is the joy of uh, a live stream experiment with technology that, as far as I was aware, didn't exist eight weeks ago. And now... <laughs> I can only apologise. <laughs> to the entire planet from my bedroom. <laughs> Really good. Utilizing I don't know. Bedrooms. Can you hear me? Call I can up. hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. Can yeah. you not see me? I can see a freeze frame of your oh, head. Now I can I see Richard's head. Hello. Hello, oh, it's me. Man. Just jumping back in to uh, say uh, welcome. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> I don't know if I'm working now. I think we might. Uh, I think we might. I might. I might make an executive decision to move on. It might be the best idea, Rich. It might be the best idea. It's okay, but there's your Ash Frith! Yes! So that was, that was, that was, that was, that was something. <laughs> Way supportive. That no, was good. It's it good. is weird. The stifle thing is weird because um, it's one of those films, because you said like, where does it, where does he work? MI5, MI6. And Teddy doesn't work anywhere. Daniel Craig doesn't work. Daniel Craig's bomb just basically is either dead or working for himself on some vendetta mission. He basically hasn't worked for MI6 since Timothy Dalton. I don't think. He's like, you know, very so, yeah, it's just my thing. It's like, it would be nice if he could just do, just, just go back to doing some missions, just like work for the, just work abroad for the British government solving Solving drug trafficking and stuff like that's what I really want. <laughs> <laughs> none of this, just just you know, none of none of these like four and a half hour long movies where you're like, oh, this could all have been easily avoided. Uh, <laughs> there we go. So ah, some um, excellent. Yeah, it is disappointing that Top Gun Two isn't coming out. I was looking forward to that. I was looking forward to how <laughs> how Tom Cruise getting Tom Cruise is out of retirement to teach is going to be the basis of an action movie. Uh, <laughs> we need some. We need. We need. Basically, we need a substitute teacher. They say you're the best. Uh, that's what the trailer leads us to believe. Uh, which, you know, teachers, as we know from uh, from this pandemic, the, the teachers are heroes too, but probably not in the literal sense that uh, Top Gun Two is imagining. It's <laughs> good. It is disappointing with the films not being out. Is everyone okay with their film viewing while there's like there's nothing at the cinema? Is everyone making do with the uh, straight to straight to video movies that everyone that's straight, straight to DVD for yeah. us, people who were famous or in a band twenty five years ago are now playing characters whose family are kidnapped, murdered, or have to get back into a life they once left, or just to kill some other people in, in an hour <laughs> and twenty three minutes. Starring footballers and American footballers and wrestlers. Uh, I mean, you know, I like that genre. I didn't think that'd be all I got from, uh, <laughs> from my streaming services during eight weeks of lockdown. But you know, that seems to be very popular. Very popular. Uh, yeah. So, who wants to play a game? Yes. Yay! There, you win nothing. 
Yay! Well, I'm, sure is. Uh, I'm just going to get ourselves ready to do some uh, do a game. Oh, I can't do my. I need uh, if uh, I can't do my screen share yet. So that is a thing that will need to happen. But we're going to do a game in a minute, uh, which is very exciting. You can see behind me, I have some VHS tape. I'm a big fan of VHS. Yeah, I love uh, the fact you're working on a screaming. You, you, uh, sorry, missing all your viewing on streaming when you've got about four thousand videos behind you. <laughs> well, I've seen them all. I mean, I've seen them all. Like, sometimes, <laughs> I've seen all the things on the streaming service. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I've seen you know, and I've got the you know, I mean, it's not like I've not seen Crank before. Do you know what I mean? Like oh. I've seen it. Well, that is a classic. It is. It is the best film ever made. You know, mm -hmm. it is. It is. It is. That is. That is a thing. I uh, hang on a second. I just need to. I can't. I'm just going to have to do a unprofessional thing. And is Holly there? Holly's here. I can't uh, share anything on my screen. Okay. So that's it. That's that's just a lovely little uh, lovely little glimpse <laughs> behind <laughs> behind the magician's curtain there for you. Holly. Oh. <laughs> uh, so that's exciting. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna do a thing in a moment. We're gonna play a game. You may have seen the TV show uh, Play Your Cards Right. We're going to do a game called Play Your Video Cards, right, where I'm going to get some stuff up. I'm going to play with Steve, or what was your name, Lincoln? Lincoln Squash. <laughs> Lincoln Squash. <laughs> uh, Lincoln Squash in Play Your Video Cards. Right. So basically I'm going to show you some VHS sleeves of videos that I own. Uh, it will it will theoretically be a PowerPoint presentation, so prepare for the upgrade of technology. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, you will talk about them, and then you'll get an IMDb rating, and then you have to tell me whether the videos are higher or lower on IMDb than the one before it. So you remember, you win nothing. Okay. You win I, nothing. I hope to win nothing. So I'm going to see if I can just share this screen for a moment. Where are we? I just want to do a basic thing. Come on. Oh, that's interesting. Nothing has come. Oh, that's good. It's not, the thing I had has not come up. That's good. I'm gonna to have to go and find the thing. So that's just what I needed. Just what I wanted. <laughs> Perfect. So nothing. I've got to find it now. Uh, no, can't find it. Nothing there. So I can't share. It's gone. Can't do it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a joy. Uh, who can do it? But it just. I mean, <laughs> you've got them there, Rich. Just hold them up. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, you know. This is, this is this is difficult. I'm not. This is not easy for me. Hey, just just pick them up. You've got you've got them behind you, surely. I could, but I'd like not to hand. I mean, it's just not going to work. I don't know. <laughs> you tell me you don't know exactly where they are. Stop ruining everything. <laughs> oh, oh, is it? Oh, hold on. Oh, oh, oh. Hello. Oh. I'm oh, be careful what you share. Yeah, you want to hide <laughs> oh, Rich. I mean, there's nothing in there that you can't look at. It's coming. Come on, you. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, welcome to the 20th century. <laughs> so this is the first one. Can you see that? Has it gone full screen? No. It's gone full screen. It's just your it. downloads folder. It's not, oh, for goodness sake. Is that it? Ironically, uh, there was a file that said can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. This is ridiculous. This works and it doesn't work. I'm so angry. This is live. And I'm, oh, God. <laughs> share, I'm it, play. share it again. If you no. Share it again. Share the PowerPoint. You'll be right. Try again. I'm going to try it. Go on. Oh. Hang on. <clears throat> Is that working? Uh, oh, oh, oh. Screen sharing. Yeah. Yes. Hey. Yes. There you go. I can... Right, <laughs> so that's the first one. Can you see that? Brilliant yeah. Film. Brilliant film. Excellent. So this is The Edge of Hell. Perfect movie uh, alumni will know this is one of my favourite uh, VHS tapes. If you look at the... Uh, the right-hand side, I'm assuming, where, where the actual logo is, where you've got The Edge of Hell and you've got that... Uh, marvellous hand-drawn picture of a uh, Thor-type man holding some Valkyrie in his arms while fire and thing. You look at that and you go, that's the film I want to watch. That's the one. <laughs> then you look at the other side, the back, we actually see still <laughs> and you think, not as keen on watching that film. <laughs> uh, but if you've not seen this film, this is a film that's called, uh, it's also as a rock and roll nightmare. This is by John Fasano, 1987. It's about a rock and roll band 
who go to record an album in a barn in the middle of nowhere, and the lead singer has done it in such a way uh, that he gets his band back so raucously and debauched that the devil himself will take issue with them and will come up from hell to challenge their like carnage. And so the lead singer can then fight the devil on behalf of humanity and restore the balance of good and evil within the universe. Uh, it is an ambitious project for the budget they had, uh, as you can see from the state of the monsters on the left-hand side. Uh, also, in true Garth Marenghi fashion, it was under running, it's under speed. So rather than slow motion like I did in Garth Marenghi, they just included footage of the van driving around. So I've done a super cut of that on YouTube you can look at. There is five minutes of the movie, which is about it's 90 minutes long. Uh, five minutes of that is just the van driving around. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, it's incredible. So you haven't got to guess this. <coughs> You've got this. What do you think this is worth on IMDb, Linz and Lincoln? Have a guess. On a three point eight. Four point one. Ooh, oh. that's cool. So now, so remember that's four point one. So let's have a look that's at this one, one here. I do want to point out. I love the picture of the front cover. It looks like Kurt Russell. Can you look, go back to the? Uh... <laughs> Well, this is here oh. we go. Here we go. Death Wish. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, my God. Oh. Death, Death Watch. Oh. Uh, this is a film starring uh, Bertrand Tavernier, directed by Bertrand Tavernier. I don't know how to pronounce it, only ever seen it written down. Uh, it's very good. It's uh, filmed in Glasgow for some reason. And is a film about when, uh, in the future, when basically everything, all diseases are cured, uh, the woman is ill, and that's a rarity. And so Harvey Keitel puts a camera in his eye. And then he uh, broadcast to a TV channel, basically stalked her the entire time uh, while to like watch her die. So it's a you know it's a, it's a, and a it's a sort of a weird slow stalker horror movie. It's good, but uh, you know is it is it better than four point one? What do we think? What do we think? It looks like, I thought it was going to be a vampire film. Looking at the front cover. No, that's just what they want you to believe. Again, look at the look, <laughs> at, the, look at the back cover. <laughs> I'm going to go lower. Lower. You're going to go lower than 4.1? Yeah. yeah, lower. It is. Higher. 6.7. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Let's move on. Let's move on to Fear. Stallone. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey. Frank, Frank Stallone. Frank Stallone. Frank Stallone. Stallone. <laughs> 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 Frank Stallone. Sure. Then, then get them. So, oh. <laughs> look at his face. I don't know. His face. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> Just something in the genes, isn't there? So, uh, Frank Stallone is Armitage. He's vicious, desperate, and hunted. On the run with a gang of ruthless escaped convicts, men with lives officially on the line, men to whom freedom means only one thing vengeance. A family at war with the world, obsessed with escape, armed with fear. Now they're in a backwards retreat, they're about to meet their match. Another family, the Haddons. <laughs> a rough family, by the sounds of it. Mm. I think it's just. I think basically, well, if, if I remember from watching this film, uh, they're all like mental Vietnam War veterans, and they mm. sort of take a family hostage without realizing that the father of that family is also a psychotic Vietnam War veteran. Yes. So uh, it's like psycho Vietnam War veteran face off with a family setting. Uh, it is directed by an editor who has directed no more feature films hmm. and written by an actor who wrote nothing else. Oh. Uh, that's, the, uh, that's the thing we got there. So what do we think? Do you think that's higher or lower than 6.7? Um, I'm going to go definitely lower on that one. Definitely yeah. lower. It is lower! Yeah. We've got one more chance for glory. We, you know, you've not won because you've got one wrong, but let's have your last. Just see if we can get like at least more, get your two for one. You know, so we've got retroactive. Retro, James Belushi, <laughs> Frank Wally, <laughs> Shannon Weary, <laughs> Kevin Wolf, Kylie Travis. Come on. <laughs> the stuff of murder, she must go back in time. Uh, this is a time travel film from the director of Crackdown, Final Judgment, The Stalker, Carno Sword 2, Soldier Boys, Made Men. It's actually quite good. Bats, Hitcher 2, Roadkill 2, and Werewolf, The Beast Among Us. Yes. And is co-written by the guy who wrote Baby on Board, The Dog Father, and Mangler 2. Mmm. <laughs> So it's uh, a real pedigree. And what we have here is uh, James Belushi is like a criminal and he picks up this woman and then they hitch a lift and he goes mental. It's a lot of mental people in this, I apologise. And then <laughs> <laughs> an underground uh, like 
lab in the middle of the desert which where they're doing time travel and they're about to experiment with their first time travel thing and then they click it and they get to go back sort of 35 minutes and she keeps trying to stop him doing the murders and the things so it's like a sort of time travel thing but in the last 20 it's like groundhog day but if like groundhog day was 35 minutes and everyone was getting murdered <laughs> <laughs> It is a pulse pumping adrenaline rush of a movie, according to News of the World. <laughs> um, uh, what do we think? Do you think that is higher or lower? Lower. Yeah, lower. I'm going to go lower. I think lower than four. It's like lower. a 4.5. <laughs> 6.2! Oh! oh. <laughs> We've failed. Oh, wow. yeah. Never mind. Never mind. A round of applause. Very well. <laughs> I mean, you didn't do well. You did terribly, but... Uh, <laughs> I came with nothing. I'll leave with nothing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You, you've, like, you've, you've let us down, but we won't. <laughs> <laughs> we need it. After the technical problem, we need, we need a win, guys. We really I'm need sorry. Win. <laughs> so, yeah, Ash is here. Ash is back. Oh, been there. I've been watching for ages. <laughs> oh. um, well, it's time to bring out... Uh, bring out... He's here. <laughs> Time to uh, show our um, special guest, uh, actor, <laughs> comedian, musician, sorts. This <laughs> mm, iffy. Please welcome Mr. Eggsy. Eggsy. Yay! Excellent. How's it going? You feeling well? Quite good. Um, yeah, having a good time, enjoying the show. Um, I haven't taken my clothes off yet. I won't do that because that's <laughs> sick. Uh, <laughs> having a good time having a good time and I've enjoyed it so far the highlights have been all of it it's just <laughs> when my internet dropped out that was a big that, peak for you that was good yeah. that was good that was good because I, I, I yeah it's just it's just yeah it's great it's great guys <laughs> so you're doing alright with the lockdown so now you're fine you're all, you, you keep yourself busy I lo loving it I went um, I went. I was downstairs for a bit, and uh, then I went upstairs for a bit, <laughs> and I went out the front for a bit, and um, just all over, everywhere, <laughs> Ev every so busy, so busy, so busy, so busy. <laughs> so busy. <laughs> so busy. <laughs> so, uh, have a little chat about films. Are you excited about films? I love films. Now, I've seen quite a few films. And when you ask me, because I did this with you in, in the real world ages ago. Yeah. And I loved that. That was a great time. And when, this, when the challenge came up to do it like this, I thought this is even better. And it's really, you know, I picked some of my favourite films. And I really want to bring the pleasure that I got from those films to the people here today. Yes, that's what I want to do. So, do you remember when when you when you was like a, you know a younger man? Do you remember like the sort of the first films that you were really into? Like what the the first films you've been? Oh god, this is what made me excited about cinema. Yeah, let me think now. It was there was a kid called Daniel Jones in my school, and his mum his dad was a builder, and his mum was a dolly bird. She had big orange hair and wore like tinfoil dresses, and they for some reason managed to get every VHS you could think of in their living room. And it was the VHS in the days when it would say um, retail price, 950 quid or something. They always had really expensive price stickers on the front. And um, you could go around there and watch anything. There was no restriction. The parents were too busy drinking to actually uh, <laughs> stop you. So I would just go around there and you would watch the most horrific um, people being pulled apart, um, zombie films, alien abduction films, uh, a bit of rude stuff as well. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Um, and that, that was where the sort of the pleasure began because up until then you could only really stay up till sort of, you know, half past 11 on a Sunday night, hoping something would be on BBC two. But if you went to Daniel Jones's house, you could watch anything at any time. And also there was a selection of magazines, which I won't go into because that's just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That is true. It's all true. And I love it. I love a good film. I, uh, what I love is a rubber monster. I don't. I don't want to see. A, I, don't, I don't want to see a drama. I don't want to see um, uh, something to do with emotions or people growing up through time. I want to see a rubber monster uh, 
just vibrating and I want to see someone's face, whole face coming off. That's what I want to see in a film. Because if you want drama, just read a paper or, or read a book, a book from about 50 years ago, older books. <laughs> but, 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 but if you want to see real escapism, you know, just come around my house and I'll show you some really good films. <laughs> Do you remember, like, do you remember, like, there being a film when you went to yourself, when you went to yourself, like, I now, like, not just enjoy films, but like, now I love, like, I love films because I've now seen this film and I'm forever now a film fan. Do you remember if there was a film that did that for you? Um, Return of the Jedi, I think. A lot of rubber monsters in that. Um, it was the best for the rubber monsters. Star Wars was good, but it's, it's, that was on too much. So you got used to the rubber monsters. Empire Strikes Back, I wasn't allowed to see it because my mother said it would scare me. And then um, Return of the Jedi, Daniel Jones's house, got around there, watched that. Loads of them, <laughs> highly produced, really well made. Um, so that would that was it as a young boy. Um, that would have been the, the thing that got me into the rubber monster scene. And The Thing, Kurt yeah. Russell, The Thing. What's, that's amazing because that's just, oh, I saw that. And that was a Sunday night, stayed up late and uh, went into school the next day and about six other people had seen it. Uh, my mate had a, is it called a Sam, Samiad or something? Those sort of white dogs, the big, it's a big white fluffy dog that looks a bit like a husky, but it's real white fluffy. And he said, my dog's a bit like the one from um, The Thing. So we went up his house to see, <laughs> see if it would come apart or anything. And it didn't, but it did a poo on his patio window on his patio doors, and then we see, he said, Mum, you'll never guess what the dog's done. He's done a poo on the window. And she said, well, if he has, he can lick it off. And he turned around and he actually licked it off. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> that was John Carpenter's The Thing. That was the influence it had on me. I was going to a mate's house to watch a dog do a poo on a window. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's why, that's, that is why John Carpenter made it, to inspire yeah. young minds. Yes, true <laughs> any any anything with a rubber monster, I absolutely love it to this day. I love rubber monsters. Brilliant. So we're going to do some of your favourite scenes now. We got some of your favourite because we do, well, if you don't know, we're going to do his favourite beginning, middle, and end. Now yes. you've got your favourite beginning. Now yes. before we say what that is, <clears> are there <throat> any other beginnings you thought of having but decided against? Are there any other beginnings you really like that we could have? I wanted. To, I was thinking of um, Raymond Briggs. Uh, when the wind blows, have you seen that? Yes. A bit heavy to watch at the moment, though. A bit on point, isn't it? Yeah. That's heavy. And then I thought of Threads, yeah. which I love, but that's, that's too heavy. And then I thought of The Road. Yeah. And I, I, that's just too heavy for this, you know. Um, so then I just thought I'll go for something that's a bit more, a bit lighter. <laughs> sort of. But it's, it's more, <laughs> more escapism in this one. And it's less post-apocalyptic. So, you know. It's, it's a personal fun. post-apocalypse, isn't it? It's, it's, his, it's his own personal apocalypse. That he... Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and this is this. Well, I won't. I won't expose the film yet. Well, let's let's keep building the tension. Yeah. This is like a, <laughs> this is like a film in itself. It's like a film in itself. It's good. It's like terrible. Those those terrible foreshadowing moments they have in films where yeah. no <laughs> one they go. Are you? Are you? Why, why do we have to do this? There's yeah. no time to explain that. We just got to go. Uh, you, could, you could have just told me. Literally, you could have just told me the time it took you to tell me you can't tell me. Yeah. <laughs> just just told get me. in the cupboard. Just get in the cupboard. Yeah. <laughs> honestly, just get in the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen a film where they make someone get in a cupboard, but I just made yeah, that up. Live, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a script writer. You're around, you're around Daniel just watching all the filth and... Uh, Monsters, I was at home watching all the cupboard movies, you know. <laughs> the cupboard, stay away from the cupboard one, stay away from the cupboard two, cupboard yeah. master. Yeah, classic. yeah, old mother Hubbard. Oh, yeah. classic. <laughs> the there cupboard the boys. boys. Nothing there. That, the the cupboard there. boys, what a classic film. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Amazing. Oh. Sounds <laughs> wicked. Do you want to explain the, your favourite opening scene to your favourite opening to any film ever? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, film ever made. This is your favourite opening. It's my favourite opening. Shogun Assassin. Shogun Assassin. Yes. 
Um, if you haven't seen Shogun Assassin, uh, you, well, you know this, Rich. It is a compilation of three <coughs> movies originally, three Japanese movies. Is that right? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's the uh, Lone Wolf and Cub series or Baby Cart series. Yeah. Um, and some, it's, it's cut a long story short. It's a martial arts film. There's a bloke with a kid in a wheelchair, uh, not a wheelchair, a push chair. Push chair's got knives. <laughs> They're similar. <laughs> the, uh, the, the push chair's, the push chair's got knives in the wheels. Um, he's been wrong. He's had enough. It's, it's feudal Japan. Don't worry about the politics of Japan too much for this film. <laughs> but it is, it is really good. And he's been, he's been wronged by loads of people. And he's just decided him and his kid are going to go out and mash loads of people up. And they really just, just. It's brilliant. And it's it's not really rubber monsters, this film, but it's a lot of cutting in half. There's a lot of you know, there's there's blood, proper blood spraying out of people. Um they've done it proper. Samurai movies where you know when you see the samurai movies and the guy just does that. Yeah. And then suddenly it just cuts to like seven people standing still, and all of a sudden they all just fall to the floor at once and blood spurts everywhere. It's one of those movies. Yeah, yeah. all the skin comes off and all that. And um I I love that. Um Again, it's great bits. They're saying with the bit where the <laughs> they have the fight, and then the guy gets his throat cut, uh, which is the way he'd always wanted to kill someone. Then he gets yes. his throat cut. Yes, the way he wanted to kill someone. And the translation is is a bit literal. They say to cut a man across the throat makes a sound like the wailing winds. For this to happen to me is ridiculous <laughs> and it's amazing because he's had his throat cut the blood's coming out and he's hearing the sound like the wailing winds but he can still say that and if if i was to die which i will i want on my headstone for this to happen to me is ridiculous just a t-shirt that says for this to happen to me is ridiculous because it can apply to a basic road traffic accident <laughs> It can apply to <laughs> you know, anything. It can apply to anything, and that's that's. What so there's there's a message in there. There's a message in there that you might not get initially. You may never watch this film, but just remember: for this to happen to me is ridiculous. You say it about lockdown. <laughs> you know, you could. So it's very similar to the. Uh, it's very similar, sort of slightly, sort of similar premise to the Mandalorian, isn't it? Where. Except it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's instead of baby, not Yoda. Yeah, that's it. And I, I enjoyed the Mandalorian um, because of that that element. But he didn't have a uh, like a push chair with like knives in the wheels. And if they'd done that, they really would have. I, if they'd done that, I would have paid to have watched it rather than download it illegally. Didn't have cancelled my subscription after seven after the seven free days. <laughs> I was a big fan, yeah, because this is great. I don't do, I do love a samurai movie. I don't know how everyone feels about samurai movies. I love a samurai, particularly these gross ones. Uh, I once tried to years ago try to learn Japanese just because of how much I like Japanese cinema. Yeah, and um, it's really hard to it's learn impossible. Japanese uh, when like just off your own back. And uh, I spoke to a friend of mine; she was Japanese. I try a bit of my my Japanese out. And uh, because I'd only watched samurai films, my accent was uh, offensive. Was actually offensive. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'd done was watch samurai movies. So I genuinely thought, because of watching samurai movies, that everyone would go, oh, no, do you know? Yeah. And apparently that's not how everyone talks in Japan. And I was actually kind of a bit disappointed that that's not true. <laughs> that's a good, just well, cutting. You know, if I learn... Because you've got to, you've got to try. If you learn a foreign language, you've got to do the accent. But there's always that danger that you do the accent too much, and you insult everybody by yeah. doing the accent. But um, you were trying though, and that's trying. That well, you got to, you know, you got to show willing. But yeah, it's very disappointing. I suppose it would be like learning English just watching like costume dramas and thinking that's how everyone talks. So yeah, I yeah. fare thee well, my lord. That kind of yeah. Thing. Hello, I've learned English. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that's what's happening with, isn't that what's happening? Is it on a tangent now? Is it bound to happen eventually? Uh, isn't that like, isn't, isn't lots of people learning English by Peppa Pig and everyone speaks like Peppa Pig? Yeah. Isn't that a yeah. thing now? Because that's the sort of the most, that's the show they watch. My daughter's doing exactly that. Yeah. 24 <laughs> 7 Peppa Pig. All she can do is oink at the moment. But <laughs> <laughs> she'll get there. <laughs> 
I'm not sure that's the. Uh, I'm not sure that's what's happening everywhere else in the world, but <laughs> that might be bespoke to you. I'm sorry, Ash. <laughs> So what's good? So in the opening to Shogun Assassin, if you've not seen Shogun Assassin, it, well, because because it's two movies mashed together, they basically have an English. It's like an English dub version of two Japanese movies, and they yeah. have the kid Daigoro. Uh, yeah. He basically narrates what's happened, which I think which is quite useful, but also it's really good. Yeah. Because normally when you have a massive narration at the beginning, it's like a preamble, and it's like here's a five minute monologue about what's happened. And now yeah. he's 20 minutes showing you what's happening. And you're like, we've just had a, could a five minute prayer will not be also. So this actually does start with him. Like it basically in five minutes, he goes, this is what's happened. And now we're, now we're, now we're roaming. Yeah. And that's just great. So um, we're going to attempt to do the first scene. You're going to be Daigoro. Is that I'll right? I'll be the little kid. Uh, I just, a little fact for you here, if you like hip hop, um, the Jizzers <laughs> album, Liquid Swords, starts with this. <laughs> And that's, a, that's really good, that is. So if you don't want to watch the film, just illegally download uh, Liquid Swords by uh, the Jizzer and listen to that and then get a stick and then smash something up in the garden as you're listening to it. Anyway, should we... Uh, should should we, we, gonna, uh, we might even, we're going to attempt, because I've given how well I've been with, how good I've been with technology so far, I'm going to attempt to play some music to add a bit of mood to it. Now, Ash, you're, we'll be in it as well. Oh, yes, right? please. Good. And Rich, you'll be in it as well. I will be playing the samurai doing my hopefully not bad. I'll just use a deep voice and will not attempt the accent. I'll do it as a young boy from the valleys of South Wales rather than as a young boy from uh, feudal Japan. Yes. So this will be really That's good. So when I, when, when I hear the music, I'll, I'll begin then. What sort of accent will you do, Ash? Um, I'm going to do a Nigerian accent. <laughs> yes, go on. Okay. Okay, ready. Uh, it's okay. it time. Uh, yeah. Bye. <laughs> are What's up? Are we going to get some music, though? You are. Okay. You are going to get some music. Very exciting. Um, in a minute. This is Feudal Japan, and um, this is the beginning of one of the greatest films you'll ever see. If you don't see it, it doesn't matter because this will this will sum it up for you. This should be a good roundup of it, shouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, a really good yeah. summary. <laughs> okay, I'll begin now. When I was little, <laughs> it was famous. <laughs> he was the greatest samurai in the empire. He was a shogun <laughs> He cut the head off 131 lords for the shogun. <laughs> the shogun just stayed inside this castle, right? And he never come out. People said his brains were like devils. And and this bit spelt slightly wrongly. <laughs> Something. Anyway, what do with evil? The shogun said his people were not loyal. He said he had a lot of enemies, but he killed more people than that a bad time everybody living in fear but still we were happy my father would come home to mother and when he'd seen her he would forget about the killings he wasn't scared of the shogun but the shogun was scared of him <laughs> and he's doing it in his own accent I don't know why it's so funny husband yes, I had a bad dream. Don't be afraid. Bad dreams are only dreams. Bad dream. <laughs> what a time you chose to be born, Daigoro. Oh, yeah. What a time for you to choose to be. Oh, night. Oh, a delay. What a time <laughs> you chose to be born, Daigoro. <laughs> Day of my life. That night, mother would sing for us. My father would go to the temple and pray for peace. <laughs> he prayed for things to get better. And one night, the shogun sent his ninja spies to our house. They were supposed to kill my father, but they didn't. That was a night everything changed forever. Azami! Azami! Your dream has come true! 
My Diagro, you must protect our son. They will pay with rivers of blood. Well, that was when my father left his samurai life and became a demon. <clears throat> he became an assassin. He walks on the road of vengeance and he took me with him, right? And I don't remember most of it myself. But I only remember the Shogun's ninjas emptying us wherever we go. And the bodies falling. <laughs> and of course, the blood. <laughs> you are marching towards death. Wherever you go, you cannot escape the Shogun. Well, that's it, guys. That's the uh... Great work from everyone, man. And if you've not seen it, that's exactly what it's like. Exactly the same. <laughs> exactly the same. Great film. It is good. It's worth joining. It is really violent. It is really good. Um, so are all six of the Lone Wolf and Cub movies, so give that a go. Yeah. Uh, and it's, if you're in lockdown, you've got plenty of time to watch them. So yeah. get in there, watch them, um, and then do something else afterwards, cook a meal or something, anything. <laughs> So yes, so we're going to move on to your next, uh, your miscellaneous scene. So obviously yes. there's any scene from any film ever. Have you got any, anything that didn't quite cut? Anything that didn't make them mix? Um, uh, I thought about Napoleon Dynamite for a while. That's a good film. But I, it's, 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 you can't, you can't re recreate that. It's too good. It's too good to try and recreate that. <laughs> Not with that attitude, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, well, there's a film that I've been trying to watch for years about a man who's got robotic hands who starts playing a keyboard and uh, he gets really good at <laughs> he's, he's, I think he's in, he's in an industrial accident and he has his hands cut off a <laughs> paper mill yeah pretty much uh, but he was I'm uh, sorry I've, I'll, I'll start again he's, he's really good on the piano then he's in an industrial accident. Then he gets robotic hands uh, and he learns to play a keyboard. And it's from the early 90s and he becomes a master of the rave scene. But the American rave scene, which wasn't rave music at all. It was just someone wearing leather in a cage while someone presses play on a synthesizer. And I can't remember what the film's called. If I'd known what it was called, I would have done a scene from that. And I haven't seen that film either. So. I can't think of it on the top of my head. So if anyone is... Uh... Anyone still with us on Facebook and you now drop us a message? <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Great film. I can't remember what it's called, but I would have done that. But instead, I've chosen uh, a different film. Yeah, so, what, this, so what, what, what film have we chosen here? And this is The Asphyx. The Asphyx. Now, is it that you like the film or is it just that it's called The Asphyx? No, this is a combination of loads of things. The film is brilliant. It's got a rubber monster in it. It's got a great name. You can watch it any time of the day, and it's wonderful. So that's why I've chosen this film. Um, it's got everything you need. And also, it's that British thing where it's set in the sort of turn of the century, late 18th century, early 19th century, but the people are clearly from the 70s, and that's what's good about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it really is one of those weird... It's like a horror movie, but it's like... It's a proper old-fashioned horror movie where it's basically not really a horror movie. It's essentially a slightly moody Victorian costume drama where one of them's interested in the occult. Yes. Business thing, so. Yeah, but a bit of a morality tale. Um, I, I like the way the films I've watched, hardly anyone will bother watching these. So <laughs> I'll just I'll, I'll give them a bit of a rundown. Basically, a bloke experiments with a camera because it's Victorian times and cameras were new. And he figures out that he can capture the souls of the dead through a camera. Um, and he makes his machine. And this thing is called the Asphyx, which in mythology was the creature that comes to take your soul or something at the moment of death. You know, something like that. <coughs> Basically, it's a big rubber monster. It's all screaming and stuff. It's all arms are wiggling. It's brilliant. It's just brilliant. I love it. And you just basically you bottle, you bottle your essence. You basically bottle your essence, and then while that's in the bottle, you just live immortal. You're immortal. Yeah. So if if I, for example, as in the film, I won't give too much away, but there's a bit where a bloke makes a homemade electric chair, which we tried to do in school, 
and we nearly got in a lot of trouble for that. But that's a different story. Um, he makes a homemade electric chair so that he can um, call this asphyx thing forward and bottle it and live forever. And the twist at the end involves a, ki- a guinea pig and uh, a man getting cut in half, and it's brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's really good. It's called so Robert I, Powell in case you're interested. Who played the well-known Jesus in well-known the film Jesus and Jasper Carrot's partner in the Detectives? <laughs> yes, yes, which was really good. I love him. I love Robert Powell. Is he still alive? Uh, I'm going to say yes. <laughs> I think yes. I like to spend a weekend with Robert Powell, uh, just a few wines and chatting to him about the, the 70s and 80s. That'll never happen, but that's okay. That's fine. Dare to dream. Dare to dream. Exactly. exactly. Well, this is the scene. We're going to do the scene where you, uh, so Hugo Cunningham, lots yes. of Cunningham. Everyone's called Cunningham in this script, but technically... Uh, so you've just had a terrible accident. You're bandaged up, and your your daughter, led by Ash Frith, is coming in to look after yeah. you. And then I come in. Uh, I'm Robert Powell, obviously, and yes. I forget to come in, and we have a chat about it. So uh, it's all very sort of exciting. <coughs> and we should start with. Uh, I'll do the stage directions for a little bit. So uh, I, I just want to say before you start, I I transcribed this myself, and it's not the most accurate script. It's not the real script. Just to let you know. Just that's fine. Well, I'm sure that everyone made up a script. is going to be furious <laughs> about the, uh, the, 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 you know, okay, the attention to detail in the script for the aspects. Okay, the words, the words from the voices are real, it's just the stage directions are made up a bit. That's fine. Uh, Sir Giles lies in bed with a mashed face covered in bandages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the bit. Daughter Christina sits next to him, he slowly awakes from his mashed up slumber. <laughs> He's got that seventies. There's a remove the bandages. The doctor said, "Now, this moment, please, Father, be patient. Let the doctor remove the bandages. Leave me, my child. One day I will explain. Send Giles to me. Yes, Father." <laughs> She gets up and leaves, turns to look at her father before she walks out. Shortly afterwards, there was a knock at the door, so Hugo is up and taking his bandages off to reveal his mashed-up face as Giles enters. You wanted to... (gasps) Ugly? Yes. But I'm not required to look at it. You shouldn't have removed the bandages. It handicaps me in my work, and my work cannot wait. Yes, you mean your real work, the true nature of your experiments. Oh, sir, you have guessed. Immortality. Yes. You've seen for yourself. It's within my grasp. Trap a man's asphyx in that beam of light and <laughs> seal it off so that it has no means of escape, and you have immortal man. I can't even begin to grasp such a concept. Why? Because of the time it would take? The duration of a mere heartbeat? The blinking of an eye? So vast an eternity, having no beginning nor middle, nor end. But why pursue (laughs) immortality? I once told a client we are in the midst of change and we must ensure the change is for the good of all. Well, once immortal, one could govern the course of events of perpetuity. I can't read that word. And with the wisdom (laughs) of age and civilization. Sir, you've lived a fine and honourable life. You have responsibilities, yes, but one of them requires you to know when to relinquish power. Giles, I need your help. I want you to send up my own asphyx and put it in the vault next to my <laughs> Think of the future. Imagine your grief when Christina predeceases you. You give me an idea. <coughs> what? You love Christina, don't you? Yes. Should you approve, we'd like to marry. I don't expect it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the signs of it? It's going to kill me. <laughs> Help me to immortalize myself, and I will immortalize you and Christina. Well, what do you say? Let me tempt you more. Think, man. Think of the power. How can you be sure that nothing will go wrong? 
for myself, I am prepared to take the risk. If the experiment fails and I die, then it is God's will. If I survive forever, then it is also God's will. <laughs> what, what do you have in mind? Tomorrow I will show you. <laughs> and scene! <laughs> there we are, the well, if you've never seen that film hopefully it's free on youtube someone's uploaded it you can watch it tonight yeah it's good you know <laughs> free free <laughs> so let's move on to the final scene the final scene which you've chosen which i think is there so any other endings that you thought of having but didn't choose yeah um back to threads um the end of threads that's rough. That is, you. I do. I thought best not do that for now. Um, that's a heavy one. Um, any other films with really good endings? Uh, no, that's just threads. It was just threads or this. <laughs> threads, threads is, or go home. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, if you I don't know if anyone's seen threads, that that's pretty. Don't watch it at the moment. It's grim. <laughs> <laughs> really grim. <laughs> really grim um so yeah so what ha so what have you chosen as your favorite ending to any film ever i have well the bob hoskins classic uh the long good friday yeah um wonderful film lots of lovely imagery of uh london in the 70s or early 80s 79 was it 79 81 something like that uh bob hoskins walks around he's really angry for the whole film he's a gangster uh somebody's treading on his territory it's all going terribly wrong for him and at the end it really does fall apart and I, and I won't tell you exactly what happens in case you haven't seen it but um it, it's oh it's great and the music's amazing the music's just brilliant uh so it's a combination of no words which was easy because i didn't have to transcribe anything to write a script <laughs> and the music's really good and it's they talk about these acting people, they talk about sort of emotion just through the sort of the facial muscles and stuff. And uh, Hoskins does it a real treat here. So I'm going to try and pay homage to Hoskins tonight by recreating that scene at the end of the film where uh, his wife's been kidnapped. The naughty gangsters have got him and it's all over. And all he does is sit in the back of a car having a terrible time with some fantastic music playing in the background. And it's really good and talking about you know terrifying things like threads and that sort of stuff the director also directed the uh, apaches public information film where all the kids go to plan a farm and get murdered by everything absolute timeless classic i love that yeah. i didn't realize that directed that as well so <laughs> wicked wicked good so good. if you've not seen the long Watch. friday uh, i'm going to attempt have you got the are you ready holly yep just queuing the track up um by the way, Darren Nuttall has asked, is Vibrations the film you were trying to think of? It is. It's Vibrations. The it film is with... Vibrations. Well yeah, done, Darren. I, Darren know. Well, I didn't want to presume there's like three people. I was like, one of them three will know. But I, I knew <laughs> on the spot. I'll also find out they weren't watching. <laughs> I knew I knew Darren Nuttall would come up with it. And I, I, I'm i really, well done, Darren. That's brilliant. Yes. Wicked. Yes. You can come <laughs> again. <laughs> So, so we're going to attempt, I'm going to attempt to do the end scene for the Long and Friday. I'm going to attempt a bit of theatre. So uh, hopefully this will work. I have no idea. You'll be Pierce Brosnan in this. I will thing. be Pierce Brosnan. I'm going to be Pierce Brosnan, obviously. Yeah. And uh, and, and like also it. the driver at the same time. And I'll be Bob Hoskins. And I've only got one line. Hang yeah. on. Where's Victoria? <laughs> And then the music starts, and then I'll just do the pure emotion that, that Bob does. Yeah. Oh, don't spoil it for Peter. You know, oh, sorry. Hey, save it. Mate. Don't ruin it. Don't ruin it. Right, you've got to imagine this seat is the back of a, a Mercedes or something. Okay. So is, is it time for me to do the. Yes. Right. I'm going to get out, and then I'm going to pretend yeah. I'm getting. Okay. <laughs> Hang on, where's Victoria?
And that was uh, Bob Hoskins in the Long Good Friday there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's close, it's close, isn't it? The, I mean, that some, was that was like it was like it was was happening, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed tonight. It's been wonderful. <laughs> well, I think we'll quit that. It's been, it's been a thank you very much, for ladies and gentlemen. Round of applause, Mr. Anderson, Ed Dixie. <laughs> You're on. You you on tour? If tours go ahead, is that right? No, later? that's that's all over now. Um, you know, we can't leave the house. There's no shows. All the festivals are cancelled. This. Uh, I, I go to Tesco's once every two weeks for supplies, and that's it. <laughs> yes, that's it. Uh, we, 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 yeah. I mean, I mean, something might happen, but I guess now we're just, just here now. Just here now, that's it. We can never just leave. Here now. Yeah, we can never leave. But if we if we do get the chance to leave, um, come, come, come and have a come to a gig. <laughs> I will. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. You'll be the other guy. You'll be the other guy there. <laughs> yeah. I can fill in, fill in. We'll fill in whichever one of whichever one of you can't come that time. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We'll do that. No problem. No problem. Well, that's oh. it. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen of Facebook, thank you for watching that. Uh, uh, that that slick as slick as slick as oil. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, um, yeah. Old, you know that was seamless and flawless. That was really that was good. It started on time. There were no technical mistakes. There, it was. It was perfect. I think we could all agree it was perfect. Couldn't really have gone good. Any better? <laughs> it was really okay. good. If you have enjoyed it, uh, why not follow Ash Friff and Eggsy and me on Twitter and all the social medias? If you have enjoyed it, why not go to my coffee, Ko-Fi, Ko-Fi, Keith? I don't know how to pronounce it. I've never seen it written down. Uh, page and donate. Uh, buy me a kebab. Uh, buy me a kebab. I promise. I absolutely guarantee. I will not share any of that money with any of the acts. It will all. Be <laughs> <laughs> fair. That's fair. They get nothing. Nothing. So <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, if you would like to come back, same, same, uh, same. Perfect movie time. Same perfect movie channel. Saturdays at nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. Next week uh, we have Ashens and the Story Beast. So that should be uh, excellent. But for now, uh, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for uh, uh, bearing with us, but also uh, supporting us. And uh, please, a round of applause for Mr. Ash Frith. Thank you. I love you. A round of applause for Eggsy. Great. Yay. My name's Richard Sandling. That's perfect movie. Thank you very much. Good night. Yay. Yay.